Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Patkai Bas. I'm your host, Jong Gajilan. I'm outside, outside the Bandrok, where the Student Union of Patkai Christian College and Postgraduate Student Welfare Council is organizing Literary and Cultural Fest Golden Jubilee Edition under the theme Identity and Diversity. The highlight of the event includes extempore speech, folk tale, drawing, painting, group song, and debate competition. And the guest speaker for today is Mrs. Masino Meta, the principal of Godwin Higher Secondary School. So without further ado, let's witness the event together.
gentlemen, it is my immense pleasure to introduce our today's guest speaker, Mrs. Massimo Meta, Principal Godwin Higher Secondary School. Respected host of the day, Tilika Shetty and Lolo Chotso, our most respected principal of the college, faculty members, executive members of SUPCC, PGS, WC, and all of the students, and if there are any other friends or guests who are here to be a part of today's program, I would like to express my gratitude to the organizing committee for giving me this beautiful opportunity to be standing before you all. As I was sitting down here, I was just thinking about what I had prepared to share with you all. But after reaching the auditorium, being a part of the program till now, whatever I was going to share and have prepared, my speech has now all changed. I was overwhelmed with memories as I was sitting here. And I was just thinking, whichever other guy stands up here, they must surely be going down memory lane like me. And surely, when they're coming up here to speak, many of the sentences which they have prepared might be left aside to share some wonderful memories which all of the students and the present faculty might be a little tired of hearing. Oh no, not again, not those old stories. But being human, it will be incomplete on my part if in between when I'm sharing about the literary day, if I don't touch one or two of my memories. I feel that this morning I'm God's chosen child of the day. Because when I look at my friends, my seniors and the juniors who got educated from this very prestigious educational institution, Patkai Christian College Autonomous. There are hundreds of people who can come here today and share with you and from whose speech you will leave the hall enriched by the speech. But today, as you are going to have your literary fest, the first day of the like program. Tomorrow is cultural. Today you have your literary day. I want us all to once again look at what is literary or why do we have the literary day. All of you are studying in an educational institute, and no institute, especially the one that impart education, is complete without the literary days or the literary events. Just imagine a world without books. How will our life be if there were no books? Yes, now we have the digital world taking over. So many students, pastors, uh, educationists, they don't like to carry books around. They carry their tablets, they just carry their cell phones, their digital whatever, and they just, from there, they are able to open it up and go through whatever they want to learn or share. But we have to understand that whatever it be, there is something which is called a book. And from this book, we gain vast knowledge. Literary is all about infusing in the students the love of reading books, not only reading books, to read books first, we have to infuse in you the understanding of why you need to read books. Only when you understand why you need to read something, maybe it's a story, or maybe it's your lesson, whatever it be, only when you develop the understanding of reading something, then only will your appreciation of that subject, of that topic, of that story come out. And from the appreciation, will slowly develop the love of what you are reading, you are supposed to read, or you are supposed to study. When we talk about literary events, we always think about it in terms of the English language. I was just thinking at home, when we have these literary days, literary events, do the students ever participate? in the modern Indian languages, apart from English. I've been so out of contact with you all that I could not ask 
any of the organizing committee members, where any of the little events are to be held in any of the modern Indian languages or not. But I see that as of now, almost all institutes, when we have our little events, especially in Nagaland, we see that it is usually with connection to the English language. This has been the norm from my time, and till today it is the same. These literary days are held when you look at the completion that are to follow today. We see that we have things like extemporary speech, folk, tale, drawing and painting, essay writing, group song, debate, etc. So what are all these about? Except for one or two of the event, we see that Almost all literary events are related with you speaking, expressing yourself, communicating yourself with the people around you, with the audience. That is why we see that literary events becomes part and parcel, an important part of your college education. Because how you were when you first step into Patkai Christian College? Only you know yourself. Because only when you come up will you be able to discover yourself. All of us are not born with a certain skill. We develop it and to develop it, we need to know ourselves. We have very good writers in the Nada society because they have a love, number one, for the English language. I'm talking today with regard to the English language. They have a love for it and then they have that interest and then whatever interest and love they have they work on it, they work hard and they are where they are today because they have put their time they have sacrificed so many things three persons came to my mind as I was just thinking about this literary being many are here upcoming young poets, story writers as young as 6 years, 7 years but we are all past that age now. We are all, we have all crossed 16 years, 17 years, 18 years. We are now at a college level. In today's competition, everyone cannot participate. Sometimes we have our own group level competitions and from there we select and they reach the stage where you will be taking part today. A shy kiddie girl who could not see till the last period because of my confidence level is standing before you all as a guest speaker that also on the jury day how wonderful my journey has been my teacher during my college days was Madam Jointi and Sir Roy here at Pakai Christian College and when we talk about books about dramas literature it is all to do with emotions, with facial expressions. Yes, we need to be a good orator. But more than that, when we act, our facial expressions, what part are you playing? Your body language, are you playing the part of an angel? Are you playing the part of someone who's supposed to be rather tough? Are you the graceful heroine in the play? Your body language matters a lot. That is why to develop all these literary days are very important because they help you develop not only speaking skills but communication skills as well as your confidence level. Because when you communicate with someone, you need to let that person know what he or she needs to understand. And you put your best in making them understand what you want them to know. Maybe through the cocktail, maybe through the play, the drama, or maybe through your speech, whatever it be. No educational institute is complete unless they have these literary programs where competitions are held. Because just participating in a program is different. Preparing ourselves to emerge as a winner is another thing.
Just this year, I remember we had a book fair for the first time in Chubu, I'm sure we are all very familiar with the Owl Barn that's just in front of the day at the Nietzsche Resort. How many of you have gone there? Can I see any hands coming up? It's very encouraging to see some hands coming up. Many hands are yet to come up. Many may not be aware of it also, but that is a place where we should go. Because education is not only confined in the classroom with your teacher teaching you. Education means it is reaching out to all those places where it is available so that you can learn more. It may not help you to get better grades in the college, but it is going to develop your personality. The Aubar, they have the book festival where they invited all the colleges, the schools, and to see Italy, many participants would come, but since it is something new in our area, many students would not go all of them and it was free. So, when we go to these book fairs, it is very important because you come across our own local authors who will be reading out from their book. Then you come across very good books. It may be on anything. It can be on poems, on cocktails, on poetry, plays, things which might not be available in your own college library. That is why I want to encourage all of you to visit the Owl Bar. Be a member, become a member. Time to time, take books from there, read it, make use of what is here to develop your skills, your communication skills, that is what I'm saying. When we talk about writing, especially essay writing, story writing, I keep telling the students, you need to have a very good imagination. When you're writing a story, an essay or a story, let's just say a story, you want to write a story about something. You have never been to that place, you have never done it, but you are doing it with what? With the help of your imagination. To be a creative person in the field of writing or speaking, you need to have a good imagination. We used to tell our students, write about your summer holidays. You might have just been in one place at home, but to make your summer vacation interesting as, a, as an essay, you just have to imagine that you went to the village, you went hunting, you went fishing, or you went out with the village people to work in the fields, because then only your essay will have weightage. It will be interesting. So it is all about imagination. If you don't develop the art of imagination, you will get, you will remain stagnant in that small world where we are, confined to the four walls of our hostel, our homes, and our classrooms. We need to develop our imagination, expand it along with our writing skills. Many of us these days are very lazy to write anything also. Because we are so also used to the computer. But I want to encourage you all. Hold the pen, hold the pencil. Do not keep up on that habit of writing with your own hand. Because there is no satisfaction as compared with writing with your own hand, your own pen pencil, as compared with typing something very beautifully and taking the print out of the computer. Let us not become so lazy that we leave behind the old system of education. Education and literary, like I'm saying, they go hand in hand. We are learning from our books. And when we say literary, we are talking about reading, we are talking about writing, we are talking about acting. 
I would like to share many more days, but you have a long day ahead of you. I am very happy that the college is carrying out all these activities with the blessings of God. I hope to come in the future also just as a spectator in the audience to be a part of any more programs that, may, that might be coming up this week. Dear students, now not on the literary side but as an alumni, I want you all to leave behind the banner of Patan Christian College. Today you are here, tomorrow you step up. Many of you are sitting before me. I see hundreds of faces. Don't just be a face in the crowd. You need to be the face that stands out from the crowd that is seated, the hundreds of people. I wish you all the best and thank you once again for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Thank you. The importance of language in preserving culture. I repeat, the importance of language in preserving culture. The significance of cultural festivals and celebrations. I repeat, the significance of cultural festivals and celebrations. For my speech is very interesting. I repeat this, does culture, cultural differences cause conflict? Cultural stereotypes and their effect on society. Cultural stereotypes and their effect on society. Is Naga culture corrupted? If yes, why? Is Naga culture corrupted? If yes, Thank you, audience, for your patient listening. Hello, everyone. I am Sampoya Bocha, the Publicity and Information Secretary of Students Union at Kai Christian College. The participants for folk tale competition are Bokekali P from Pop Science Department, Nan Yuasi from B News, and Aumei Yungsung from Pop Science Department. I request the participants to come and take your time. Ladies and gentlemen, my respect to the panel of judges, teachers, and to everyone here. My name is Bokipali P. I'm from the Department of Political Science, second year. The title of the folk tale I am about to narrate is called The Cuckoo or Kasho Papu in Sini Dialect. Long ago, in a small village, lived a man who had a young son. The son was a very famous and brave warrior. The neighboring villagers also knew of his bravery. One day, the son went into the forest, carrying a dog and a spear to protect himself from his enemies. His father quietly followed him and hid himself behind the bushes. To test the son, the bravery, the bravery of his son. The father made a roaring sound like a tiger and threw a piece of twig at him. The son immediately picked up his spear and threw it towards the direction of where the spear came. He then rushed towards the spot where his spear had landed. And to his horror, he saw his spear in the chest of his father. He hurried towards the side of his dying father. In a feeble voice, the father said, My son, do not be afraid or sad about what has happened, for I am dying peacefully in the midst of your bravery. The son was filled with immense pain and grief as his prompt action has led to the tragic end of his father's life. The son said, Father, 
It is your fate that you die today. But before you die, can you please tell me the right time and season for sowing the seeds in the field? The dying father then replied, My son, I will return to you every year in the form of the bird, the cuckoo, to remind you about the right time for sowing the seeds in the field. When you hear the voice of the bird singing, Cuckoo, cuckoo, you must know that it is time for sowing the seeds. Saying this, the father died. So a few days later, the son and his friends began the journey to attack their enemies. On the way, the son heard the birds singing, Cuckoo, cuckoo. He was immediately reminded of his dying father and his advice to him. He pretended to be extremely sick. His friends, seeing him in extreme pain, decided to send him home. After three months, when his friends returned from the quest, they saw his flesh in the fields. But it was too late for him to sow the seeds in their own fields. The son made a very beautiful harvest because he had sown the seeds in time. It is believed that the father turned into a bird called the cuckoo after his death. Since then, whenever people hear the bird singing cuckoo cuckoo, our forefathers knew that it was the time for sowing. Even today, in the villages, whenever people hear this bird singing, they know that it is time for sowing. For sowing. The legend of Kashiwabu resonates through generations. The story of the Dumula. Long ago, in a village far away, there lived a young girl named the Dumula, and at a young age, her mother had passed away, so she was left with her father and her stepmother. And unfortunately for the Dumula, her mother, her stepmother, was very kind to her. She made her work harder than what her frail body could even do. And her words, her words, they were harsh, they were mean, and they were meant to hurt her. You stupid girl! You don't even know how to do this! No dinner for you tonight. But Dedimola was a faithful daughter. Even when faced with malice and abuses, she would respond with just her silence and her obedience. One day, Dedimola's father left for an expedition with a few of his men. And Titi Mora was sad, of course. She didn't want to be left alone with a cruel stepmother. But like the freer daughter that she was, she reluctantly waved her father goodbye with tears in her eyes. After her father left, she was made to work hard, harder than what she had worked before. One day, Titi Mora's stepmother was pounding rice and she called Titi Mora to come and help her. Titi Mora came and Titi Mora's stepmother commanded her to use her tiny hands to wipe the grains off as she pounded them. But as soon as Tadimola's tiny, tiny hands came in to wipe off the grains off the rim of a huge wooden mortar, the mother would strike down hard on her tiny, tiny hands. Damn! It hurt. It hurt her so much. It was so painful. Mother, please, please, can you please stop? I think my hands are broken and I cannot go on anymore. Please. The mother, the stepmother scoffed. You still have your elbows, don't you? Just use them, you stupid girl. Use your brain. And the Dimona accepted she obeyed. So she went once again, proceeded to wipe her brains off with her elbows. And the second time, the mother struck again. Damn! Much harder this time. Mama was hurting, she was feeling like a mother, please, mother. But stepmother would listen. And one by one, Titi Mama's tiny, tiny limbs, her hands, her feet, her legs, until only her head was left. But to no surprise, Titi Mama's stepmother said, Titi Mama, you still have your head, don't you? Use it. Tedimola's body was limp and not moving anymore. So Stefan picked it up and dropped it off in the river. Weeks later, the father was returning back with a few of his expedition men. 
and they swung by a river to rest and bathe. And in far distance, the father, the Timon's father, could see a bright and vibrant swallow that was blooming across the shore. And he ordered one of the friends, boy, go and pluck that flower for me and bring it to me. I want to bring it home for Tetimola. She loves flowers. So the soldier went. As he approached the flower, just as he was about to pluck it, the flower spoke, I am Tetimola. Please call my flower. Tell him to pluck me. <laughs> the man was amazed. He was flabbergasted. But he still ran back, told the whole story to the father. And the father could not believe it. But without a moment's hesitation, he ran. He ran to the flower, and the flower spoke again. Father, I am the Timola. Please lay on a white cloth for me, and I shall come to you. So the father did just that. And then a tiny bird came and flew onto the cloth. He gently wrapped it in the cloth, carried it in his arms, and cried to me back home. As he got back home, his wife greeted him. He, she pampered him. Oh, honey, I'm back. But he wanted to ask, where is the Timola? Oh, that silly girl, I told her not to go. But she went off with some of her friends and she never came back home. <laughs> the father knew the truth and he was furious. So he confronted her and banished her from the village forever. And then with the help of an old white sea woman, the Teddy Wong was brought back to life into her original human form because her soul was residing in the body of a small bird just waiting for her father to come back. And he did, and he brought her back to life. When the villagers heard of the story, they were amazed and they wanted to remember the Timona story. And so they sang a song that goes like this. Father, her father, and she finally gets the happy ending she deserves. Thank you. I want to share today uh, is a short story from the Naga tribes, which I came across when I was uh, there in the White House. I mean. So it was a very beautiful story which I wanted to share with my friends and with you all today here. So, on a windy, on a uh, windy day, in a small Naga village, little Chimpai, three years old, had, had been crying the whole day without stopping. So the, so the mom and dad were trying their best, they gave him, they gave him rice cakes, they, they sang songs for him, they, play, uh, they gave him tools to play with. But he just did not stop crying. He, he kept him crying and crying and crying. So, so the father was very angry at him and he warned him, My son, stop crying. And he said in his, in his diary, which says, Shikolan shiok now, nadal lan yashok. Which means, you're a man, so be a man. Don't be like a woman. Only women cry, men don't cry. That's what he said to his, to his son. But then the son was still crying, 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 crying. So the father at last got very angry and then he said, if you don't stop crying today, I will not let you have dinner in the house and I will let you sleep outside of the house and I will not let you enter the house. But the, but the son, he still continued crying. He still continued crying, he didn't stop. So the father got very angry. So he dragged the son out from the house, locked him from inside, locked the door from inside, and the son still crying, 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 crying. So evening went by, uh, and then the son decided to leave him because he saw it from the outside. Father, father, please let me in. Father, please let me in. I am so hungry. Can you please let me in? I will stop crying. But the father said, Okay, let's see if you stop crying. But the, but the child was still crying and banging on the door. Father, please let me in. But he did stop crying. So the father said, No, I will not let you in. And then I'll stay. Right, right. 
يعني خلاص بعض السجن. If you don't stop crying, I don't care anymore. I will let you sleep in the house. I don't care any the monsters or any evil spirits come and take you from me. I will not let you in the house. So the son, hey, uh, the son, the very scared, and he's crying and he's crying. And at last, the crying, the crying stopped. So the father and mother, they, they were concerned as to what happened. So when they opened the door, they were surprised to see that the son was not there. So they looked around the house, the son was not there. After that, they, were, they looked around the village and called out all the village people to look for the, chick, for the son. Still, they couldn't find the son. And finally, as time went by, father and mother, they were very tired. And soon, when they returned back to the house, a strong wind passed by the house. And after that, they heard a knock on the door. When they opened, when they opened the door, what did they see? The mom, she opened the door. At first, she looked to the left. She looked to the right, she looked up, nothing to see, nothing to find. After that, she looked down to see what? She saw a white shiny bone down there, thinking, what is, what, what is this? What is it? So she stood up and looked and found out to see that it was her son's son. Son's son, yes. This is the story which was passed on by uh, the Korean tribes uh, for, from the elders to the younger generation uh, by which they are trying to share the message that you know, words carry a lot of weight yeah, you can, uh, which they are trying to share the message that you know, use your words wisely you, you, the things that you say to others may not be mean to them I mean, may not be mean to you, but you can also hurt them in a lot of ways. So, choose your words carefully. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Rituals and attire are repackaged for tourism and entertainment, stripping them to their authentic, or from their authentic meaning, and also economic prioritization. The tribe for economic growth frequently comes at the expense of cultural preservation. Ancient sites. A demolition for new developments and traditional ways of life are traded for jobs in industrialized cities. For example, peace an agent for progress. And progress can enhance, can enhance this traditional culture that you have. Because according to me, traditions are unique, beautiful, pure, and are full of mysteries that I find so interesting and I want, uh, I want to say that let's not push aside traditional culture just for progress. And fellow people present here today. So the topic for today's debate is tradition and modernity are antithetical to each other. Now I shall be speaking against the motion now, today I come before you to challenge the age-old notion. Today I come before you to challenge the age-old notion that tradition and modernity are at odds with each other. It's easy to see them as opposing forces, but I urge you to reconsider. Everyone who contributed to the success of today's 
I, on behalf of the Students' Union at Kaya Christian College and postgraduate students' welfare council, would like to extend a heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed guest speaker, Mrs. Massimo Meta, Principal of Godwin Higher Secondary School, who spared time from her busiest schedule to grace our occasion. Today, we had the opportunity to hear her thoughts and her experiences, and this will surely uh, encourage us now and even in the future. I would also like to take this time to thank Heritage Publishing House and Made in Ireland for supporting us by providing us with the resources and uh, gift tempers for the winners of today's competition, competitions. A huge thank you to all the participants who showcased their skills today. Your stories, debates, your speeches and your art uh, were truly captivating and uh, it left me in awe and I believe it was the same for all of us here. A special thanks goes to our esteemed judges for lending your expertise and time to evaluate the performances the competitions held today. I hope our participants and also our other friends are encouraged to grow and improve. I would also like to acknowledge our college authorities, faculty and staff members for supporting us in every possible ways and for believing in us. A big thank you to the organizing committee for their hard work and dedication in bringing this event to life and I also thank every friend who, have, who lent their helping hands. Hezekiah Band and Tijon Boy Vero, we thank you so much for your amazing performances. We feel so proud when events organized by us are publicized. So I would like to take this time to thank the Department of Mass Communication for covering our event today. I thank each one of you for joining us today. Your presence has not only added to the vibrant atmosphere, but has also shown us the strength and unity that comes from embracing our diverse background. Above all, I thank the Almighty God for making today's program a resounding success. Oh, I can, uh, before I conclude, I, would, I want to mention that the excitement doesn't end here. We have another event coming up tomorrow, uh, that is our cultural event, and it promises to be just as amazing. So let's keep up the uh, let's keep the momentum going and look forward to another incredible celebration of identity and diversity, where all uniqueness rejoice together. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. The event is named Literary and Cultural Fest 2024. So through this event, we hope that hope that uh, the students are able to hone and showcase their literary abilities. And also, we want to illustrate that there is diversity and unity in our college, and then like appreciate the different cultures and different cultural and uh, sorry, uh, different cultural backgrounds of our college. Thank you. Thank you so much, Liz. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, like, I participated in this literature, literary fest because, like, obviously, I'm a literature student. If not me, if not us, then who? Like, and then I feel like uh, this kind of fest or like uh, programs enhance one's uh, ability to speak and be like more confident. Yeah, thank you. Programs like this are important because uh, it gives us knowledge about our past, our culture, uh, from where we come. Uh, it defines us who we are from where we are and what we are yes this kind of program is important thank you this is all for today i'm your host yomga jilen signing off with camera person nehuzo <laughs>